Hey guys, in this video, I really wanna go in depth into setting up a footprint in Sierra chart and all of the settings. So not just um, the most basic, but also the more complicated settings. So I'm gonna right click and go to studies and add numbers bars. And we can see by default, this is what it's going to look like. So I'm going to, let's down to the bottom. I'm gonna go into the numbers bars. So in Sierra chart, we can have three columns. So you can see we have column one, column two, and column three. So each of these columns, we have what text we wanna show, how we want the background, and how we want the background colored, and how we want the text colored. So I'm going to make a volume profile, and then have the middle be bit ask, and the right be delta to kind of show you how that works. So for a volume, this is gonna be on the left. The background, we can have it be volume profile, which will show the vol volume profile like this. We can also do volume profile outline, which will be like this. I don't really like the outline, so I actually like the volume profile. And each of these have a right aligned version um, so you can do right aligned volume profile, which is what I'm going to do since it is displaying on the left side. So the first column will be on the left. And so having this shoved to the right um, will look a lot better as it'll look one as one piece. Um, we can change the text coloring, for example, to be based on the volume percentage, um, but this will make it kind of um, different. I, I just like it to be um, none because we can already see those volume changes with the colors. And for this, I'm going to just make it a, let's make it just grays. So let's do 200, 200, 200, and then slowly get darker. I'm gonna do 150, 150, 150. And then 100, 100, 100. And then we are going to do 50, 50, 50. So this is gonna be for the up bars. We're gonna also have to do the same thing for the down bars here. So I'm gonna do this to be reverse. So 50, 50, 50. Um, 100, 100, 100. And then the same down for these ones, 150, 150, 150. And then our last one will be bright again. So we're gonna do 200, 200, 200, okay. So now that we have this, um, we can leave it how it is. We can also remove the text here by just going to no text. Um, and so we kind of have a visualization, but um, we these are all based on bars so we can't actually tell where there is a lot of volume comparative to other bars since each bar is going to have the point of control pretty much fill up this whole space and so there's actually a setting down here that we can change to make it not be based on um, the per bar but based on the visible bars um, here. So volume profile bars length relative to all visible bars. So we can set this to yes, and this will change it. So now we have certain bars that are going to be bigger and it is going to display where we actually have a lot of volume relative to other bars instead of it just being per bar and showing the point of control um, extended with the most volume. So next thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to add a column two. So I'm gonna change this text and change this to ask volume by, um, our bid volume by ask volume here. And now that we have that by default, it is going to um, have a line separator. So we can see there is a separator here. Um, it is just a line. So I'm gonna go back, right click studies and go back to numbers bars. And the way that we can mess around with the text here and the divider is we can go down here to right here, numbers, separator, character. 
So in here, we can have it be an X. Um, we can have it be two spaces, three spaces, four spaces. I actually really like the space, X, and then space. This kind of gets it spread out a, mo a little bit more. You will have to adjust it just so that your chart is um, zoomed in enough here on the time scale so that it displays a little bit better. And then we can do that. And to kind of help the visibility of the text, um, what we'll want to do is go a little bit below here where it says numbers separator character. The font size mode, this is going to be, um, right now it's based on the chart font, so it is going to default to whatever we have set for the chart, but we can change that to be automatic with minimum maximum limits. So this will scale it up and down based on the limits we put in. Um, I like to have the maximum and minimum be pretty similar. So we can do like maximum be 10 and the minimum is eight. Um, eight will be a really small. 10 is going to be the bigger. I kind of like to have it um, very small since I have a high resolution screen and that'll show up better. Um, if you want it to just be locked at one specific size, you can just set it to the maximum and minimum to be the same. Um, I'll switch that back. So now we can see we have those um, numbers. Obviously we can have the background um, coloring method changed. We can change the, right now the full background is not gonna show anything as long as this shows transparent. If we want, for example, to this be based on the same thing as the volume, we can do that. So now you can see it's based on the same thing as the volume here. And we have the lighter colors and we can change this um, if we like. Um, I personally like to just have this one be transparent. So I'm gonna leave that at transparent. Um, you can mess with the text if you want it to kind of show some of the um, imbalances per se. So you could do something like this and then you could go in and change um, down here. We have settings relative to the percent compare thresholds. So I would definitely want it to highlight a lot less um, things. And so one thing we could do is we can go in here and change the thresholds and also change the colors here to have the middle colors be black. What this does is the most shallow um, differences aren't actually going to change the color. And then we can change this. And so what I'm gonna do is go back down and change the percentage. So now we can see anything that shows here is going to be um, the uh, with the 75% threshold essentially. So if we do 90, um, a lot less is going to show nearly nothing. So 75 or 80 is probably still pretty good here. And you can actually do this um, per um, column is change these percentages on how it is coloring um, those shades but I personally kind of just like to do it like that um, you can also have the background colored something different and then have the text colored a different way by going down here to use separate colors for text coloring and you could set this to yes so if I set this to yes it's gonna go back to what we had previously since this was the same as we had the one at, at the beginning. So we'll go back. Now what I'm going to add is I'm going to add a third column here for Delta. So for that, we can see we have ask, ask vol, bid vol, difference diagonal. We have um, a bunch of other stuff. We have the side-by-side -side ask vol, bid vol, difference. This is the one that I like to use. So we can go right here. Now you can see we have the text here and by default the text is going to be aligned to the right side. So there is a setting to be able to change this. So any single number um, text values, um, the way that we can change that is go down here to a single value text alignment. And if we sent this to center, it's going to center those. If we sent it, set it to the left, 
we can have it like this. I personally like left or center because right kind of feels disconnected just like if we had this profile aligned to the left. Um, we kind of want to scrunch everything to the middle just to make it look a little better. For right now, I'm going to put centered and we're going to go back here and we are going to change the background type. And what I'm going to do now is go to ask bid difference profile and this should show left aligned automatically. And then for the background, we are going to go down and go based on ask vol bid vol difference actual there we go so now we can see we have red bars for anywhere with um, negative delta and green for anywhere with positive delta we can go in and change these colors um, i'm going to change this let's do blue so i'm going to go here to blue and make this the darkest choose the same color and just go up a little bit um, each time that's an easy way to make a gradient and then we'll do really bright here. Okay, so now we have these thresholds here and we have the red and the blue for the delta. We can then change the text coloring based on the delta as well. So we can do um, asphalt, bidvault, difference, actual as well. And then we can also, what I'd like to do to make these numbers pop a little bit more is we can go back down here and we can change this to yes. Um, the only issue is now it's gonna do that for this as well. So we're gonna go back and make all the middle numbers black. And we are going to make the extremes um, bright blue and bright red. So I'm gonna go here and make this black. And we're gonna make this one bright blue. I'm gonna just do this bright blue. And for the red, I'm gonna make it a little bit of a pinkish, like light color there. So now we can see we have um, those colors there. And let's try to make the delta show a little bit more. So let's go check. It's based on asphalt, bid vol, difference, actual. Um, let's try the asphalt, bid vol, to volume at price percentage and there we go now we can see we're getting a little bit more it's a little bit less visible since we have a black back or a white back background here but you can see we have these highlights i'll just change the background to um black and the text colors to white just so we can see this a little bit better or I'll actually make it gray since um, since we have black text. There we go. So now we can kind of see these a little bit better. You can see we have these highlighted um, areas here, um, right here, and you can change the colors a little bit just for visibility purposes. Um, but that's how you set up that. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a candlestick. So, cause right now we can't really see where the open and close are happening. So to do that, we can go here to open close marker style. And right now it has arrows on price, um, but there's no column. So if we put, let's say column two, so the middle column, it will show an arrow on the open and we can see an arrow on the close. And these colors are based here. So for the um, open or the up, I'm going to make this be blue. For the down or the close, I'm gonna make that to be a red. So now we can see those are there. I like to have it be a candlestick um, outline, like just the body outline, because if we do a actual candlestick outline, the Candlestick kind of overlaps with these X's in the middle and we already know where the high and the low are based on this bar So I just like to do the candlestick body outline here and There's another setting, but it's at the bottom to change the thickness of this. I like it to be very thin so we can go here to the um, Bottom here and do candlestick outline width change this to one 
and this will adjust that candlestick um, body to be less thick. Um, next thing we can do is we can have the current transactions highlight um, as they are happening. So you can see right now, we can see price moving up and down, but we can't see where exactly are these transactions happening. So to kind of see the highlight there, we can go down here and go to bold highlight last trade price, and we can change this to highlight or highlight and bold or just bold. So now you can see it is highlighting here. Um, I'm going to make this the bright blue, so that pops a little bit and that will help us to kind of see where price is at. I personally like to do, to add um, current price line and kind of use that as a way to um, see where we are and then draw this underneath and change it to something like black to be more visible. Um, that's kind of how I like to do it. So then you don't actually really need um, the highlights. You can kind of see where price is transacting already. But I'll just remove that for now. Um, another thing that you can do is we can um, change the default text color here. We can also, if you're trading crypto or something, you can do large number value volume formatting so it says like 1.3k 13k something like that instead of the exact number and also we can um, adjust the spacing between these candles so if you do for example 15 let's say 50 these are all going to change the candle spacing so as you can see, it scrunched down the other parts of the candle because there has to be room for the spacing. So there we go. So we can change that spacing around to kind of have a little bit more of a gap in between um, each of these candles. Now, there's not much else we can do. We can have it highlight the maximum value. Um, so you can, for example, highlight the... Uh, point of control essentially or the maximum delta so if I do column three it'll highlight the maximum delta and we can also highlight the point of control so if I go here point of control we have that on the left side so the column one so this will highlight the column where we have the point of control we can change the Line width to one, just to make it look a little bit more clean, a little bit sharper. And that way we can see those um, a bit better. So I'm gonna go back to RTH so we can see. So you can see we have those being highlighted there. Um, obviously you can see there's a bit of um, white space since we have it based on visible bars. So this isn't going to fill up that full space like it normally would. Um, but that's what it does. And we can also highlight and extend the equal bid ask volumes. Um, we can do the same for the minimum value as well. And we can also create a pullback column, but I'm not going to go into that. But that is pretty much the gist of what we can do with the footprint chart, kind of going a little bit more in depth on some of these settings that we have here. And another thing is we can essentially extend poor highs or poor lows, or sorry, unfinished auctions essentially, where we have we don't have a zero at the edge of the profile.